Hello class, welcome to the next segment in the week 12 material and in this segment we're going to discuss something called a CGI script which stands for a common gateway interface and before we get into actually creating a CGI script I want to explain and illustrate how exactly the process behind the CGI script works. So a CGI script is basically a program that generates HTML content or generates the contents of a web page. And the way that this works is from your internet browser, you'll access a CGI script. So that's the first thing that happens here. And by internet browser, it means something like Safari, Firefox, Google Chrome, Edge, Opera, whatever it might be. Thank you for that, but I'm not installing updates right now. So this is the first step of the process. You go to the CGI file, or the file that has the CGI script from your browser. It'll be part of the URL. And then when the CGI file is accessed, it's going to run a program on the server, and that program is going to generate the HTML contents of a web page. So up until this point, we've been creating HTML content manually. We've been writing out the tags by hand, using our, uh, just using our keyboard. Uh, a CGI script also generates HTML content, but it's a computer program that generates the contents of a web page for us. So this is most advantageous if you're working with a web page that might be updating constantly. So if you can imagine, say the Oklahoma Mesonet takes observations around the state and that's updated every five minutes. And if you want a web page to display the information, it would be a really tedious and not very fun process to go through and manually edit all the observations on a web page every five minutes. So having a program to automatically generate a web page for us every time the Mesonet updates would be really nice. So that's one potential use for the CGI script is you can create files that update automatically on their own if you're, say, displaying information that is updating on a fairly rapid basis. And then after the CGI script generates the HTML content, the output or that HTML content is then passed back to the internet browser and it's passed to the internet browser as if it was written out by a human hand. And then once it gets that content, then the browser takes the HTML content and displays it and in the process creates a web page. So that's the basic idea behind how a CGI script works is it's a computer program that's generating a web page as opposed to the human hand generating a web page. So now that we hopefully have an, a basic understanding of how that actually works, let's actually go about the process of creating a CGI script. So first thing we have to do is to get back onto the server. There we go. And since we're creating what's basically a web page, we do have to be in public underscore HTML when we go to create the CGI script. So make sure you're in public underscore HTML before you try creating a CGI script. And usually the way a CGI script is created is something like the following. So G and E, and here I'm just going to call my CGI script example.cgi, and then again the little ampersand here. And the ampersand is going to be especially helpful for this CGI script, as we'll see later on. So it would be a good idea to utilize that. You can see it brings up something like this. And let me also make sure my command line is still there. There we go. So now what you want to do is you want to go onto the class web page right here and then go over to the week 12 tab. And then within the week 12 tab, you'll see something called CGI template.txt. What you want to do is sort of a, to get your ground set to creating a CGI script, you want to copy that uh, CGI template into the file that you just created here. And again, the keyboard shortcut to paste something into a G any file is control V. There we go. And a few things that should be noted, first I'll go ahead and save this. A few things that should be noted is, sorry about that, <laughs> okay. A few things that should be noted, take three, is this right here at the very top, that should be the very first line that appears in the CGI script, Other th otherwise it's probably not going to work the way you want it to. So make sure that the very first line that is line number one, make sure this is on the very first line. If it's on the second line, it may not work for you. And essentially what this does here is this is basically tells the server and the browser what programming language the CGI script is written in. And this URL leads to the compiler, in which case this is just a Python program that is in fact generating the contents of our, of our web page. And another thing that you want to make sure is included in what's on, is what's on line seven here. So this content type, you can have a CGI script that generates any file in theory, but usually they're used to generate HTML files. 
this content type header at the top here, that basically tells the browser what kind of file we're generating. And this text here says we're creating a text file, and then the HTML after that slash basically means that we're creating an HTML file. And since we're creating an HTML file, we're basically creating a web page. And then some other stuff that you see in here. So you see all these print statements. And since this is a Python program, it'd be kind of nice if this was highlighted. So since we don't have the .py at the end here, GNE doesn't really know that this is a Python file, but what you can do to sort of color code everything to Python syntax is if you go to this document menu and then go to set file type, scripting languages, and then Python source file. And if you do that, now everything is nice and color coded so we can sort of pick this uh, document apart a little bit more easily now. So we have some import statements, some modules that are frequently used in CGI scripts. At the very least, you want to make sure this is here, import CGI, and I would also make sure import sys is also here. This is basically uh, a server-side system module. And here you see we have a print statement that has a single quote, which is pretty similar to what we had earlier. This print statement that begins on line 8 here uses triple quotes, which basically allows us to put put like carriage returns and stuff inside of our print statement, so put in new lines. So the way the computer is going to read this off is whatever is appears in between the triple quotes will be displayed and printed exactly as it appears inside the print statement. So this will put HTML on the first line, head will go on the next line, title tag goes on the next line. You can see this looks a lot like an HTML file, what's inside this print statement. And in fact, the print statements here are in fact generating an HTML file. So if we want to actually see what this looks like when we go to run it, so here I'll go back to the command line. And here I'll go ahead and say, okay, that's saved. Here I'll go ahead and Python our CGI file. So I'll say, take example.cgi and run it like a Python file. And if I hit enter, you can see, if we ignore this bit at the top here, you can see this looks a lot like what we were working with earlier in index.html. You can see it looks like when we run this program, it generates this HTML content, which is very similar to what we had over here. Again, the key difference is in this index.html file, we, the human hand, were creating all this manually, but with the CGI script, our Python program is generating this HTML content, which will be displayed on a web page. All right, so if this is, in fact, an HTML file, or if this is, in fact, a web page, then we should be able to go to it, access it in some way. But if you were to do this right now, that is, go to the URL to view it. So again, that'll be imagear 1313net forward slash tilde, your 4x4. And then if you want to access a specific file within your public underscore HTML directory, then you just simply include the file path in the URL leading to that file. So if you don't include that, it'll just by default look for index.html. But if you want to look for a specific file contained within public underscore HTML, then you put the file path in leading to that file. And I'll go ahead and zoom, up, zoom in up here so you can see that a little bit better on the screen recording. And then if I were to attempt to do that right now, I would get this result. Internal server error. This is going to be something you'll probably encounter a lot during the course of creating CGI scripts. We'll take a look at how to diagnose these in greater depth later on, but in a later segment. But one thing that you have to do, there's another command you have to run in the command line in order to get this to actually work. So I'm going to go ahead and type out ls just to show you what the file looks like right now. So there's the file we created. And you notice there's some other CGI, what look like CGI scripts inside my public underscore HTML directory. They're all colored green. And you may remember way back from week 11, I said that green files were executable, which basically means they can run on their own. And since our CGI, our CGI script does in fact have to be made executable, and the way we accomplish that is to use something called the chmod, or some people call it the chmod command. chmod. And then after that, a numerical sequence that basically tells us how we want to... Chmod basically modifies the privileges of a file. So one privilege is the read privilege. Do you have permission to read the file? Another one is the write privilege. Do you have permission to modify the contents of a file? And then executable is another privilege. So can you actually run this file uh, as, it, uh, as it stands? So chmod751 will basically set it up so that we can make our file executable so that it can actually work when we go to access it from the web browser. So the way that works is chmod space 751 space and then the name of our CGI script follows. 
and no on-screen acknowledgement, but I do want to make sure that I highlight this. So example.cgi is black to begin with, and we type the ls command out, now it is in fact colored green. So if you're getting this internal server error, one thing that's a good idea to do is to check to make sure you ran the chmod command correctly, and if you ran it correctly, then your file should be colored green when you type out the ls command. In fact, if I want to take this a step further and type out ls command with more details, you should see three X's here over on the left-hand side of the screen. So example.cgi, that's the script we just made executable. If you did the chmod, chmod command correctly, you should see three X's over here on this left-hand column, along with some other stuff. So make sure the three X's are there. That tells you that the file is in fact executable and it should now run if you access it from your web browser. So now that it should be set up properly, we should be able to go back here and refresh the page. You can see we no longer have the internal server error, but it doesn't look like anything showed up on the screen. So the, we didn't get the internal server error, which is good, but we didn't actually, if we go back to the, let me actually do this again, Python this. So you can see we just printed out a bunch of HTML tags. We didn't really print out any text. That's why nothing's showing up on the web page. But uh, we'll actually look at how we can get information to display on the web page or on the CGI scripts in a later segment. But this is just sort of a first look at CGI scripts, how they work, how you go about creating them. So in the next segment, we'll talk more about CGI scripts and how to diagnose internal server errors if they arise. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.